a pull-through knife sharpener that is not evil. Evil! Evil! Is there such a thing? So if you're, um, if you're the same rough backstory as me with knives, your first experience with any form of sharpening a knife was probably with whatever handheld pull-through kitchen knife thing that your parents had. It was usually two pieces of carbide going like this, and you'd tear through the knife, it'd make it marginally sharper, and at a great rate of knots, it would make the blade creep up towards the spine, and you'd eventually end up with every knife in your kit looking like a fishing knife. So that's pull-through sharpeners, the stigma. What I've got in front of me today is a pull-through sharpener made by Fiskars that I'm hoping is a little bit better. Whether it's going to get a good result or not is one thing, and whether it's going to destroy my knives while sharpening them is another thing. So having a look at the Fiskars here, you've got a fairly cordial action. This is an axe and knife sharpener. So we've got right now we've got axes. No, right now we've got axes. Now we've got knives. Axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, knives, axes, knives. Ten out of ten. I'm just kidding, but that's kind of fun. So just a basic look at the unit. You can get this from a hardware store. Um, I got it from Bunnings. Um, it's a it's a Fiskars product made in Finland by Fiskars, so it actually seems fairly well done. Um, you can obviously swap it between the two types of guides. So yeah, you get what you get. There's no honing in or any fire. This is a very basic tool. But you can also push this button here, right? Push this button on the bottom, and then you can slide the whole thing out for cleaning. And you can see the wheels there. So the whole thing comes apart just to get all of the bits of blade crap out there. There's the spring that's controlling the uh, backwards and forwards kind of maneuvering of the thing. So let's get this back together now. Right. Or is it? Yep. Back to there. Pop that back in, and <laughs> and I've broken it. Idiot. Right now, there we go. That's the way. Okay, so anyway, oh, almost had an aneurysm from that. So don't take it apart, because just don't. The spring has some subtle, I've like moved it one rung too fast, so now like the axe part, you have to, have to hold it like that to be able to sharpen the axe rather than it just sitting there, because it sort of springs back just a little. But anyway, we're looking at the knife part today anyway. I'll try the axe part too, but oh. oh. So. Anyway, we'll try it. We'll start with the Holtzfors GK, right? There's the SK5 steel. I'll um, illustrate that it's dull at the moment. The paper cut test will be the test that we're using to get the knife back to cutting paper. So there's SK5 steel. Pretty dull, right? So um, this shouldn't sharpen up too difficultly. So what uh, Fiskars recommends on the, <laughs> the back of the stuff is 15 back and forths, and then it should be sharp again. So uh, let's see how it fits. Okay, so the knife goes between, there's this wheel in there, and the knife kind of runs through the wheel. Alright, so I've done a couple more. 
Let's see if that's a paper slicing edge again. Okay, kind of is. Not a great paper slicing edge, but Okay, so it's put on a pretty rough high grit micro bevel. The problem with this sharpener is, and you can see here, the wheel starts about that far into the device. So on this knife here, you can pretty much, like I'll show you on a macro shot, the sharpening only begins here rather than right at the handle. So this is pretty much gonna be for kitchen knife style handles only where the steel protrudes or where there's a, like a big choil or something similar. But does it put an edge back on? I'm gonna do another 10 passes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I've got 10, 11, 10, 11. Does it put an edge back on? Yeah, it kind of does. So that's... That's kind of something. Now they're just gone again. Come back, Edge. Come back. Okay. I think what it's done is, even though it's kind of two pretty even ceramic discs, it does nothing for bare removal. So I think what's happening is, yeah, it's sharp, but after a couple of cuts through the paper, there is a deep burring that still needs to be done, and so the burr eventually gets pushed by the paper, and then the knife edge is no longer nice anymore. So it starts off really nice. And then the burr eventually gets pushed one side or the other by the paper. Takes a while, might not, but what you're gonna to need to do after this one is a decent strop, I think. So that will be the test to see if it actually gives you a quality edge. One second. Homemade leather belt strop, piece of belt on a piece of wood. Oh yeah, definitely a burr, you can see the little scratches it's putting on the leather surface. That's much better. So, in company with a strop, how evil is the Fiskars pull through sharpener for knives. Well, still pretty evil, I think. That just drove me crazy that it came apart and then it's really finicky to get back together the way you want it to. Um, it puts an edge on about, you know, 80% of the knife, which isn't really enough. And um, yeah, it leaves a pretty shocking burr that needs to be stropped off, which isn't an issue, but it doesn't really give you any, for someone, this is for people who have no idea, or, like with sharpening knives, or want it done really quickly, and probably neither of those types of people are gonna know much about making a, a quick belt strop, so there you go. Um, right, my Spidey Chef also needs sharpening. Very dull. Let's see if it works on the pull-through sharpener with something slightly more complex than SK5 carbon steel. This is LC200 and um, quite fancy high-end uh, stainless rust-proof-ish steel. Still on knife mode? Yes. Two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 pushes and then, oh, it's just hideous. And then a strop. Okay, so it does restore a very sharp edge with the strop, but it's a hideous edge. It's like, um, and it's still too short, so it's still, it is blocked by the, the guard there. So what you could possibly do is, if you're game, pop it open and just use the wheel like that and try and just Keep your knife straight going through the wheel, and that way you can get, no, even then you can't really get all the way to the heel too well. Let's see if this has worked a bit better. It's going to be a bit harder to keep it straight, but you know, if it gets you all the way to the edge, that might be the better solution. Righto. Stroppy, 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 strop. This is just leather with a little bit of um, uh, Tormek compound in it, so nothing too hard. Right, Let's see how that went from the beginning. All right. So that's how you do it. If you're happy to forego the guides, if you're happy to forego the guides, you can sharpen your modern fancy. Um, this isn't a micro melt. This is a micro melt, or is it a a powdered steel? I can't remember. Anyway, you can sharpen your highly modern steels using the Fiskars wheel thing, all the way to the, to the heel of the blade. If you take the whole thing apart, but then, as I said at the start, if you take it apart. You may well be like me and never get it quite right back together again. So, in terms of how evil this um, this Fiskars or this pull-through sharpener is, I'm going to give it about a I'm going to give it a Golbez out of ten. So not quite Zemus. Golbez was being controlled by Zemus, but still had you know some um, you know unsavory ambition in him that left him open to that control. Uh, rather than Cecil, even though he was a Dark Knight, uh, was far more sort of um, headstrong and, and able to stick to the, the noble cause. So, um, yeah, that's, that's probably where I'll put this. Uh, Golbez out of 10. Uh, about a 6 out of 10 on the evil scale. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. You said that about all the presents. I just want attention.